And I have nine grandchildren. Seven of them are 11 or under. Two of them are in college. Those seven that are 11 or under represent the joy of my life and the life of my children. But tonight when you and I go to bed and each member of this Senate goes to bed, somewhere back in our state, young women, women and young children the same age as my grandchildren will be, bought, will be bought and sold into slavery. They will be trafficked as human beings for sex workers, for pornography workers, and for workers themselves. It is wrong for the greatest nation on the face of this earth and the richest nation on the face of this earth to have a crime of human trafficking take place day in and day out. I'm so proud of Senator Cornyn and others in this Senate who brought forward the bill that's before us today. And I want to appeal for a moment for those who are holding it up to go to cloture to ask themselves this question when they go to bed tonight. When you put your head on that pillow, some child somewhere in your state is going to be trafficked for sex purposes or pornography. Some young life, some life of innocence is going to be ruined. I think it's time for us to put aside any differences we may have on this legislation and move it forward so that we add for the first time a focus on human trafficking and the abuse of kids. This is a serious problem in my state of Georgia. Atlanta has one of the highest rates of trafficking of any city in the United States, I'm told. Our Attorney General Sam Olins has said the following, and I quote, human trafficking is a modern day slavery, plain and simple. It robs children of their innocence and their dignity. We must combat this evil. And it's appropriate that the most deliberative body in the world, the United States Senate, begin to put together a framework where we confront child slavery, sex trafficking, and the targeting of our children in multiple ways. We need to provide them with benefits to be able to be protected. A lot of that's in terms of housing and safe havens, but a lot of it's in terms of other things. We need to increase the federal resources for victims of trafficking, number one. A lot of kids that are trafficked and get out of trafficking, get out of possession, end up having serious problems in their lives with PTSD and TBI. The trauma of being abused as a child is as rough as the trauma of the battleground in Afghanistan or Iraq. We must provide the safe havens and the therapy and the mental health care that's necessary to help them bring back their life. I gave a graduation speech five years ago to a young lady who was 22 years old graduating from high school. She had dropped out of high school, pregnant at the age of 15. She had come under the spell of a trafficker who took her in, made her a sex worker, and, kept, and she ended up having three additional children. She was almost lost for life, but finally some good found, person found her. They brought her into the county school system. They found a way for her to go to the alternative school. She ended up graduating number one in her class and going to Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta, a life that was saved, but only saved because people reached out to her. We need to encourage that and produce that. Back in my home state of Georgia, in my hometown of Roswell, Georgia, there's a guy by the name of Dave McCleary. Dave McCleary is a Rotarian who two years ago took this project on as his passion, to be a spokesman for those that are abused, those that are trafficked, and those that are thrown into prostitution and pornography. He's made a major difference in Rotary Clubs around Georgia and now activating themselves to pay attention to this terrible disease and this terrible affliction. We need to recognize child pornography as a form of human trafficking so victims have access to support. And we need to require that traffickers be treated as violent criminals to protect the victims and, the, and witnesses. And most importantly of all, we need to help state and local governments fight human trafficking through increased shelter, law enforcement, task forces, and problem-solving cures for problems with people with these problems. We also need to get to the floor for another reason. Senator Corker in the Foreign Relations Committee has a bill which would be an amendment to this bill which expands our human trafficking response. We can't get to that until we get to cloture, and we can't get to cloture until we get 60 votes. So I appeal to the members of the Senate to find common ground to let this debate come to the floor so that when you lay your head on the pillow tonight, instead of thinking about a child that's being abused, you can think about an abuse that you're avoiding because the United States Senate took action on human trafficking. Mr. President, I'd like to separate my further remarks from the remarks I just made in the record. Without objection. Mr. President, two years ago, on the 49th, 49th anniversary of the crossing of the Edmund Pettus Bridge by a bunch of brave citizens who challenged the United States to do what was right and make voting rights equal for everybody, I walked across the Edmund Pettus Bridge with Congressman John Lewis from my state. John Lewis is 75 years old this year and continues to be a leader for civil rights and for passion. This past weekend in, in Selma, Alabama, he led the President of the United States, President Obama, the past President of the United States, President George W. Bush, and over 100 members of Congress across the Edmund Pettus Bridge. For us to reflect and remember on the last 50 years and what's happened in this country, where voting rights have gone from being a dream to a reality, from where equality for men and women and people of all races now exists. It would not have happened were it not for a few good men and a few good women who at their time in history responded to history's call. John Lewis was one of those people. 
I am proud to serve with him in the Georgia delegation to the United States Congress, and I'm proud of all that he's done to make America a better place to live. So in this year in which he celebrates his 75th anniversary, and on the 50th anniversary of the crossing of the Edmund Pettus Bridge, I pay tribute to a great citizen of Georgia, a great American and a great humanitarian, John Lewis, the congressman from the Atlanta, city of Atlanta and the state of Georgia. And I yield back the balance of my time.